Greetings in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. My name is Pastor Johnston Sakwa, coming to you live on the Scripture Prescription this amazing and wonderful morning. What a privilege, what an opportunity, what a time to hear the word of the Lord. I'm excited as always to have this privilege to speak the word of God into our lives. I want us to pray. Father, we thank you this morning. We thank you because you're good. We thank you because you're mighty. And we thank you because you are awesome. Father, in the name of Jesus, I ask that, Lord, you'll speak to us by the Spirit of God this morning in the name of Jesus. I bless you and I honor you in Jesus' name, I pray. Amen. This morning, I'd like to speak about a subject I have titled, Who Challenges Your Life? Who Challenges Your Life? I want to read the Bible in the book of Matthew, chapter number 26 and verse number 40. Then he came to his disciples and found them sleeping and said to Peter, what could you, what could you not watch with me one hour? Watch and pray lest you enter into temptation. The spirit indeed is willing, but the flesh is weak. Now, I have been putting some understanding or some kind of idea and thought to the lives of people that what makes you to move to another stage depends upon the people you surround yourself with. Either they are causing you to stagnate or they are challenging you into greatness. Now, this is what I mean. If you are the one with the greatest idea amongst people, you ought to understand that you cannot progress beyond the challenge that you receive. If you're the one that gives every idea to the group that coalesces around you, it is high time you move to another challenging group. Because if you're the one with the greatest ideas amongst the people you interact with, it means you have outlived that group. Now, Jesus comes and asks the disciples, finds them sleeping and says, could you not watch with me one hour? It means, obviously, Jesus would pray more than one hour. Now, if you want to challenge yourself into greatness, into the capacity that God calls you to go, you have to be in groups or in, around individuals who challenge your life consistently. Praise the Lord. Now, one of the reasons why people procrastinate or delay at one place is because they are the epitome of ideas in the groups that they sit in right now at the current, current moment in their current circumstances. They are sitting in an environment where they are the ones who call the shots. Now, unless you are able to challenge yourself into greatness, you can never make progress in your life. I'm here, therefore, to submit to us in the name of Jesus Christ that God will give us divine enablement to be able to surround ourselves with people who will challenge us to pray more than one hour. Just like the disciples were being asked by Jesus, what could you not watch with me one hour? Are people around you telling you that you have done all that can be done? Are people around you telling you you are the best that can ever be? Are the people around you telling you there's nobody we can trust the idea except the idea you're giving us? Let me tell you, you are in the wrong group. You must be able to coalesce around you or sit in an environment where you are challenged to do even greater things in your life. I've sat with men and women of God who do things differently and they challenge me to seek God even more. The way they are able to internalize, memorize, and interpret scripture challenge my life. Some of them, the way they have given themselves up to prayer, they challenge me. The Bible tells us, study to show yourself approved as a workman that needs not to be ashamed, but rightly dividing the word of truth. 
What you need to know is that you must seek knowledge. You must read books. You must challenge yourself to do things better. You must look at life in a more uh, in a more 360 degrees approach. Looking at life from all dimensions so you can be able to progress in life. You ought to progress physically. You ought to progress spiritually. You ought to progress materially. You ought to progress in the family dimension. You ought to progress in every dimension, every facet of your life. You must give life a 360 degrees approach. Look at your life wholesomely. And if Jesus was asking the disciples, hey, don't pray for one hour, it means he could do more. And so we must sit in places where we are perpetually challenged. I want to sit around people who pray more. I want to sit around people who study the word more. I want to sit around people who are investing. I want to sit around people who are successful in their marriages. I want to sit around people who are able to manage their children in a godly way. I want to sit around this people. So who challenges your life? Do you even have any challenge? Are people you look into who can inspire you to be better than you are right now? Who challenges your life? This morning, I appear before you with humility that the Lord ought to help each one of us to challenge ourselves into being better than we are today. People waste a lot of time complaining and thinking other people are their problems. No. Many people spend all their time imagining that, you know, somebody there out there is the one who is bringing problems to you. No. You know, you are 100% responsible for your life. Now, I, I came across a scripture that says, do not be in a hurry to live in the king, to leave the king's presence because in the word of the king, there is power. Another place says, the king does not listen to everything that servants say. When people discuss you behind your back, they have lost their capacity to be referred to as kings and so they are operating under the spirit of servanthood. That they will be lorded over. A king does not blaspheme. A king does not um, talk about people. A king ought not to be petty. A king not ought to discuss small things. A king ought to discuss great things. The king does not listen to everything that servants say. Many people have lost their kingship by choosing to discuss other people. Who challenges your life? May the good Lord be with you. The good Lord bless you. The good Lord stand with you. The good Lord favor you. The good Lord encourage you. The good Lord stand with you. The good Lord do everything you got to do to be a blessing to your life. Let us pray. Father, we thank you this morning. Thank you for the privilege to be called your children. Thank you, Father, for the power in the name of the Lord. And that you have challenged us to sit in environments where we are perpetually challenged to get into our greatness. I thank you this morning and I bless you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. The good Lord bless you. The good Lord be with you. This has been your host and your servant, Pastor Johnston Sacco, coming to you live on the scripture prescription, your daily morning dose of the word of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen and amen.